Neanderthals fascinate us because they teach us about ourselves, who we were and who we may have become. It's easy to see them in idyllic terms, living in harmony with nature and one another, like Adam and Eve in the garden. If this is the case, maybe humanity's faults, particularly territoriality, aggression, and conflict, are contemporary manifestations rather than intrinsic parts of our nature, but territoriality is deeply ingrained in humans. Indeed, biology and paleontology portray a grim picture. Far from placid, Neanderthals were most likely superb combatants and lethal warriors, only surpassed by modern humans. In contrast, the prevalent and dangerous concept of the peaceful noble savage remains. The noble savage is a traditional character in Western anthropology, philosophy, and literature who has not been tarnished by civilization. As a consequence, the noble savage symbolizes the moral superiority and intrinsic goodness of primitive people who live in peace with the environment. Indeed, the majority of scientific and popular publications have agreed that ancient combat was infrequent, insignificant, benign, and only a symptom of advanced civilization. According to this hypothesis, ancient combat was essentially a ritualized game with minimal casualties and few negative consequences from aggressiveness. Nevertheless, people in the Stone Age had a 1 in 10 or 1 in 5 chance of dying violently because they lived in tiny, warring bands. The notion that warfare was a modern invention is debunked by facts, providing a crushing reaction to such comfy clichés. The evidence convincingly demonstrates that prehistoric warfare was more lethal, more frequent, and more brutal than modern warfare. We are a rare and deadly species, but we pose the greatest threat to other human groups due to our competition for resources and territory. Neanderthalensis were adept large game hunters, employing spears to kill cave bears, cave lions, rhinoceros, giant elephants and holy mammoths. It defies credibility that they would have hesitated to utilize these weapons if their families and lands were under attack. In fact, archaeology reveals that such battles were frequent. For example, ancient techniques that prioritized raids and ambushes over formal confrontations typically resulted in a high death toll, adult males captured by an enemy were almost always slaughtered, while surprise attacks seldom spared women and children. It is quite doubtful that modern man met the Neanderthals and chose to just live and let live. Humans have a history of aggressive military expansion. If nothing else, an aggressive military approach is also an effective evolutionary strategy. Nevertheless, we must have tested their soldiers for thousands of years, and we have consistently lost. We were quite well matched in terms of weaponry, tactics, and strategy. Finally, the deadlock ended, and the tide turned. We do not know why. It's likely that the development of better ranged weapons, bows, spear throwers, and throwing clubs, allowed lighter built Homo sapiens to bother the stocky Neanderthals from afar utilizing hit and run tactics. Perhaps greater hunting and gathering tactics enabled humans to feed larger communities, resulting in numerical advantage in warfare. Meanwhile, Neanderthals likely had tactical and strategic advantages. They'd been in Europe for millennia, undoubtedly developing extensive knowledge of the geography, seasons, and how to survive on the natural flora and animals. Their enormous, muscular physique must have made them formidable combatants in close quarters warfare. Neanderthals' large eyes most likely provided exceptional low-light vision, allowing them to navigate in the dark for ambushes and early morning attacks. They were long derided as knuckle-draggers, but new discoveries are setting the record straight. As we rethink the nature of the Neanderthals, we could also learn something about our own humanity. Neanderthals were extremely physically strong and fast, certainly stronger than the vast majority of humans living today. And yes, they went extinct just after our own species entered their territories. But neither fact means they were sluggish or cognitively inferior to us humans. Darwin argued that in animals having separate sexes there will in most cases be a struggle between the males for possession of the females. The most vigorous individuals, or those which have most successfully struggled with their conditions of life, will generally leave most progeny. But success will often depend on having special weapons or means of defense, or on the charms of the males, 
and the slightest advantage will lead to victory. Neanderthals have long been seen as hulking brutes, but another new study finds Homo sapiens men essentially emasculated their brawny brethren, when they mated with Neanderthal women more than 100,000 years ago. Those unions caused the modern Y chromosomes to sweep through future generations of Neanderthal males, eventually replacing the Neanderthal Y chromosome. According to one article, Neanderthals were sex-obsessed thugs and were found to be more aggressive, competitive and promiscuous than modern man. Furthermore, scientists examining fossils have discovered that Neanderthals were exposed to more testosterone during development, which is likely to make them more unreconstructed in their behavior. That means they were more likely to start fights over mates and hierarchy in the group, and more likely top of multiple partners. Much has also been made of the coupling of Neanderthal extinction with the entry of anatomically modern Homo sapiens into Europe at the beginning of the Neanderthal extinction. Some anthropologists believe it is a mere coincidence, primarily because there is little or no evidence for war or direct competition between these two human types. These twist of fate anthropologists further argue that Neanderthal brains and behavior were the absolute equivalents of modern Homo sapiens. Neanderthals once inhabited the whole European continent. Around 45,000 years ago, Homo neanderthalensis was the most common human species in Europe. Archaeological finds indicate that there were multiple settlements in Germany, but then the Neanderthal reign came to a quick end. Based on an analysis of known archaeological sites, concludes that Neanderthals reached their population peak just before rapidly declining and eventually becoming extinct. Neanderthals lived throughout the Middle Paleolithic era, which was the middle of the Old Stone Age. This historical period ranges between about 200,000 and 40,000 years ago. The research, published in the Quaternary International Journal, concludes that more than half of the known Neanderthal habitation sites in Germany date back to the Middle Paleolithic. The number of sites, the investigation, and the artifacts discovered at these settlements, show that the Neanderthal population in Germany experienced tremendous demographic changes. Several migrations, population growth and decrease, extinction in particular locations, and finally a return of settlers, seem to have occurred throughout the Middle Paleolithic. These settlements were inhabited between 60,000 and 43,000 years ago, but the apex of the Neanderthal population seems to have occurred during this time period. There are 94 known habitation sites between 70,000 and 43,000 years ago, compared to just four between 110,000 and 70,000 years ago. Yet, fewer than 1,000 years after this demographic peak, the Neanderthal population collapsed and vanished. It's still unknown why the species went off. Perhaps it was owing to a lack of genetic variety, or to the development of Homo sapiens. Yet, a strange pattern emerges, humans arrive in the Arctic, where Neanderthals did not inhabit as far as we know, many thousands of years before they arrive in Western Europe or the furthest east sections of the Neanderthal homeland, the Altai Mountains. Again, this shows that our predecessors had to battle their way across occupied regions slowly, but could move more quickly when avoiding direct confrontation using technology to exploit environments that Neanderthals could not. Humans most likely possessed technology, such as fur coats, warm shelters, and fire-making technology, that enabled them to survive in frigid locations where Neanderthals could not. They may then have advanced back into Neanderthal territory, completing another flanking operation. Nevertheless, this was not a blitzkrieg, as one would assume if Neanderthals were either pacifists or lesser combatants, but rather a prolonged battle of attrition. Finally, we won. But this was not due to a lack of fighting spirit. In the end, we probably simply grew better at fighting than they were. Furthermore, remains of an early Neanderthal with a super strong arm suggest that Neanderthal fellows were heavily pumped up on male hormones, possessing a hormonal status unlike anything that exists in humans today, according to a recent paper. Neanderthal males probably evolved their Neanderthal ways due to lifestyle, genes, climate and diet factors, suggests the study. Evidence shows that Neanderthal males hunted in the extreme. Neanderthal females weren't delicate creatures either. 
Indeed, compared to anatomically modern humans, Neanderthals had a larger muscle mass and experienced a higher loading on the upper extremity than did Homo sapiens. The common method for killing animals was direct contact with the victim. Instead of shooting prey, such as mammoths, with a bow and arrow from a distance, Neanderthal males would engage in face-to-face -face contact, jabbing long, thick spears directly into the animal's flesh. The fossil displays an unusual mixture of thickened walls with narrow bone marrow region cavities. This, according to the scientists, suggests intense mineralization provided for the strong, sturdy bone structure, with the inner narrowness based on a stronger shaft architecture requiring much less mineralization. The mixture is puzzling, because Neanderthals demonstrate a markedly androgenic constitution, meaning they seemed to have a lot of steroids, yet these same hormones can cause reduced mineralization. As a result, the researchers say Neanderthals were characterized not only by peculiar biomechanical adaptations, but also by a specific hormonal condition which has no close parallels among modern human hormonal conditions either normal or pathological. This condition might have evolved as a result of inherited genes, life in an often cold, northern climate, and an almost all-meat diet. Scientists explained that edible plants in colder regions were few and far between, and the vegetation period, was short. With little fruit and vegetables, the Neanderthals became specialized hunters who hunted terrestrial herbivores, such as mammoths and forest deer. Their diet then consisted nearly exclusively of proteins and lipids, which must have affected their hormones and bones. Meanwhile, one reason why researchers know that Neanderthals used to live in a cold climate is that their remains have been found next to those of Ice Age mammals like mammoths, woolly rhinos, horses and reindeer. Some have also argued that their physical characteristics, particularly short limbs, large nasal cavity and a large torso, were evolutionary adaptations to living in the cold. Hunting in woodland generally involves a need for speed and acceleration, in short, sprinting. This is because when you encounter prey, say behind trees, it can be very sudden and you need to respond rapidly. By contrast, the endurance running that characterizes modern humans is more useful for pursuit hunting in open grassland environments or tundra. The woodland theory led us to suggest that Neanderthals may have been adapted for sprinting rather than distance running. The idea that Neanderthals may have been built for speed gave us a new way of interpreting their body form. Among modern elite athletes, long-distance runners tend to be lean and have long limbs, whereas short-distance runners tend to be much more muscular and may have shorter limbs in proportion to their overall body size. It's easy to see that the Neanderthal build is more like the sprinters than long-distance runners. They are also based on the assumption that the genetic variants associated with power and speed in humans today act in the same or a similar way in Neanderthals. It is also possible that Neanderthals carried other genetic variants associated with locomotion, ones that are not present or have not been studied in living humans. As with all studies of the past, there are alternative explanations for the patterns we see, but the approach we have taken signposts a potentially valuable path for studying the evolution of the wider human family. All species are uniquely adapted to the ecology they live in. The emerging picture of how we differ from Neanderthals is no longer one of the smart versus the stupid, the sophisticated versus the unsophisticated, the brutish versus the refined, but instead one of endurance versus speed. It turns out that the differences once used to classify Neanderthals as more primitive than modern humans, such as their build, may instead simply reflect adaptations to different hunting requirements. Nonetheless, Many anthropologists believe that it was a competition for resources, and not direct conflict, that led to Neanderthals' extinction. Some argue that small but significant cognitive differences between these two human cousins were the reason that Homo sapiens could extract greater resources from the same environments. Finally, and probably most controversially, evidence suggests that some Neanderthals practiced cannibalism. From a game theory point of view, Cannibalism appears to be an optimal way to obtain resources. In the long term, however, cannibalism is a bad evolutionary strategy. Neanderthals sometimes hunted now extinct big cats called cave lions, which were larger than modern lions. 
The finding is some of the earliest evidence of ancient humans killing top predators, as opposed to plant eaters like mammoths. We have to think about the way Neanderthals saw their prey, and it was more than just as a package of meat. They would have considered parts like the hides, the marrow, and the bones as resources, even selecting certain bones for different purposes. The evidence is twofold, a cave lion specimen revealing evidence of hunting and the remains of a cave lion pelt with its claws still attached. Researchers already knew there were cut marks on the bones, suggesting the lion had been butchered after death. They have now found a puncture mark on one of its ribs, which seems to have been made by a wooden spear thrust into the animal's chest. The injury had previously been misidentified as a wound from another carnivore. Ancient Neanderthals also ambushed huge bears just as they were waking from hibernation, then stolen their caves. These cave bears were hunted and butchered by Neanderthals. Modern humans seem to be profoundly unusual, even when compared to other Homo sapiens. We got skills that no other people had, including the capacity to create and destroy objects. Unlike previous people, we learned to alter not only a few stones into tools, but also other species and the earth to achieve our goals. Whatever it was, something seems to have occurred that distinguishes us from other humans.